Hello and welcome to lecture 59. We are discussing about design of transonic compressor. So, in last few lectures we were discussing about design of transonic compressor with different configuration in sense of flow tracks. So, we were discussing as transonic compressors are mainly high pressure compressors and per stage pressure ratio that is what is very high and that is the reason why the flow that is what will be coming out at the exit that will be having higher pressure. That means its density also will be higher and in order to satisfy the continuity equation assuming our axial velocity to be constant my exit area will be coming to be lower. And for that we have discussed about three different configuration one we have discussed as a constant tip diameter, constant half diameter and third approach we have discussed about assuming some radius ratio. Now what all design methodology we have adopted for transonic compressor with two configuration constant half diameter and constant tip diameter where we have discussed about the fundamental design approach. At the same time we have discussed like as per the requirement when people they are doing their transonic fan design that is what is having somewhat different approach and that is what is the most recent approach. So, we should explore that possibility in this subject especially with the interest. So, let us move towards that part. So, what we have realized if we consider we are having say vortex flow that is what it say Cw into r to the power n equal to constant. So, for most modern design people they are changing the low distribution at the mid span they are changing the low distribution at the tip and near the hub region. So, what exactly they are doing say near tip and hub the design it is say offloaded design where this exponents that is what is been taken as n equal to 2. We can say this is what is helping in order to reduce the end wall losses mainly say near the tip region that is what is reducing your tip clearance losses at the same time at the hub or near the hub that is what will be reducing hub corner losses. Now at the mid span in order to compensate what load we will be losing near hub and tip that is what will be getting compensated at the mid span region where this exponent that is what has been selected as n equal to 0.8. Now this, this is what is giving the flexibility in order to reduce the losses and that is what will be improving the efficiency. One other criteria that is what is a wider operating range and in order to operate our compressor or in order to have wider operating range under off design condition some design strategies need to be modified. And that is what is depending on say kind of experience the designer has and what all are the strategies they have been decided by engine manufacturing company. So, for particular organizations they are having certain rules and they are following certain laws in order to design those transonic compressors and fans. So, what we have learned from that let us try to take one of the numerical. What it says? the fan of low bypass ratio turbo fan engine is required to operate at a pressure ratio of 2 and has mass handling capacity that is what is 55.6 kg per second. The outer diameter is limited to 1 meter and inlet hub to tip ratio is 0.35. So, we can say these are the constraints say we should not exceed our casing diameter beyond 1 and at the entry we are having hub to tip ratio to be 0.35. It is required to design the fan with loading gradually decreased near the hub and tip region assuming constant axial velocity throughout the span. Air enters the rotor at a temperature of 59.6 Kelvin and pressure of 37 kilopascal. This is what is we can say low bypass ratio engine that is what is mainly been used for say fighter aircrafts where we are doing design. So, many times the designer they are preferred to go with cruise condition. So, this is what is a cruise condition we can say. The rotor rotational speed must be kept under 8000 rpm based on the turbine rotational speed and preferred to have 
mark number should not exceed by 1.4 near the tip region of the blade so in overall if we look at what we are planning to do is the design of say axial flow fan for low bypass ratio engine that's what is having say compression ratio in the range of 2 that's what is slightly on the higher side we can say entry pressure and temperature they have been defined under the cruise condition mass flow rate is given that's what is 55.6 kg per second and what it says my casing diameter should not exceed by 1 meter rotational speed also is constrained by 8000 rpm and it says my axial velocity that need to be constant so we must realize actually by changing our wall distribution or load distribution we are violating the law of radial equilibrium so as we have discussed earlier also for many times especially for axial flow fan design this violation that's what has been valid and people they have done design and those designs those fans are working fine absolutely fine as on today also and that's what we are opting here so let's try to have solution for this so what all we know is my size and speed that's what we need to estimate okay we need to do our design at 75 percent of span because this compressor we can say that's what is a transonic compressor we can say this is what is transonic fan now we are looking for different velocity components and velocity triangle in order to determine the components like axial velocity peripheral speed relative velocity absolute velocity different flow angles all those things there's need to be calculated at different stations so initially we will be doing our calculation at the mid station and then after we will be applying our law here in this case we are not opting for say straight free vortex design or straight force vortex design or maybe fundamental design so that's why it is named as a control vortex design so let's try to understand what exactly is the meaning of that now as we know at the entry condition we need to have our entry dimensions now in order to have those dimensions we must know what will be our entry density at the same time we are looking for say axial velocity as well as peripheral speed also need to be known in order to complete our velocity triangle so what we will be doing let's say for this case we are assuming our axial velocity suppose say 150 meter per second and nothing it is mentioned so we will straight away say at that particular station or say we can say our entry that's what is say axial entry that means my ca and c1 they both are same if you are putting that that's what is giving me my entry temperature as say 248.4 kelvin now we know what is our entry pressure what is our entry temperature so based on that we can calculate our static entry pressure and that's what is coming say it is 31.70 kilopascal now this things that's what is already been discussed in so many cases that's the reason we will not be taking much time in explanation here we can say we can calculate our density based on our static pressure and static temperature that's what is coming to be 0.44 kg per meter cube now once this is what is known to us we know our continuity we can write down that is nothing but it is in sense of say my density into area into say axial velocity here in this case at the entry my hop to tip ratio that's what is given it is 0.35 so based on that if you are assuming our tip dimension to be 0.5 it says my mass flow rate that's what is coming 45.9 kg per second now this is what is less than what mass flow rate we are expecting so we need to realize if my entry mass flow rate that's what is low that's what will be reflecting in sense of my thrust generation capacity for particular engine and that's the reason why we can say this is not acceptable mass flow rate at this moment that means what axial velocity we have assumed that's what is say on a lower side 
So let's try to take our axial velocity to be say 200 meter per second. If you are taking that to be 200 meter per second, we will be having our temperature, static temperature, it is 239.69 Kelvin. We can determine our pressure, static pressure, that's what is coming, say 27.98 kilopascal, and we can calculate our density. This density is coming 0 0.406 kg per meter cube. Now, if you will be putting this in our mass flow rate equation that says this is what is coming as say 55.96 kg per second. So, we can say this is what is in acceptable range. Now, this is what is very important when we are doing our assumption for axial velocity. We have discussed in earlier numerical also sometimes we need to assume with the axial velocity. Many times axial velocity may be known to you, maybe flow coefficient is known to you all those design strategies we have already discussed. Now, based on that, we need to define with what need to be my peripheral speed. Okay? So, in order to have that peripheral speed to be calculated, let us assume say my tip peripheral speed as say 370 meter per second. If we are taking that, my rotational speed is coming 7066 rpm. You can say that is what is say near to my 8000 rpm. So, at this moment let us let us put that as a number. We need to check with our relative Mach number at the tip and in order to do that calculation we need to calculate our relative velocity. If we are calculating our relative velocity that is what is coming 420.56 meter per second. Our sonic speed that is 310.33 meter per second. So, we can say the tip mark number that is what is coming 1.36. We can say that is what is less than 1.4. So, this number that is what is acceptable. So, we can say now we are fixing with our axial velocity, we are fixing with our peripheral speed. So, you know like many times based on certain assumptions you can go forward with. It says it should not exceed by 8000 rpm. You have that flexibility, you can assume the speed to be say 7500 rpm and you can do calculation, there is nothing wrong in that. So, this is what is based on few of our iteration and that is the reason why we are straight away putting our peripheral speed as say 370 meter per second. So, based on that we can say we are finalizing our axial velocity that is what is 200 meter per second and it is given that is what is constant throughout my span. And our peripheral speed we are considering 366.52 meter per second, rotational speed we are considering 7000 rpm. If this is what is known to us, so at the entry condition we can say we are having our parameters known for making of a velocity triangle. Now this is what is a fan that is what need to be designed. So, if we consider this is what is my entry condition, we can say that as a station 1 and this is what is my exit condition, we can say that as a station 2. Now, here in this case, in order to calculate my exit dimensions, we know what is our pressure ratio. So, our pressure ratio given that is what is say 2 and based on that, we can calculate what will be our total pressure at the exit. Now, this is what we will be using in order to calculate our delta T0, that is nothing but my total temperature rise across my rotor and that is what is coming 63.17 Kelvin. Now, from the known parameter, if this is what is known to us, we can calculate what will be our total temperature at the exit. Since my T01, it is known to us, say delta T0, that is also known. So, we can say T02 that is what is coming 322.77 Kelvin. Now, what it says like we have considered or it is known say axial velocity that is what is say 200 meter per second. So, we will be putting and taking that as same. We are considering say assuming say exit to be axial in for the sake of simplicity we can say. So, for that we will be calculating our exit temperature and that is what is coming 302.86 Kelvin. Now, once this is what is known to us, we can calculate 
what will be our static pressure at the exit and that's what is coming 59.21 kilopascal. Now once the static pressure and static temperature they are known to us we can calculate our static density and that's what is say P2 by RT2 that's coming as a 0.68 kg per meter cube. Now in order to calculate our exit dimension we will be taking help of our continuity equation. So from this continuity equation at the exit system if we are writing that's what is nothing rho 2 into a2 into axial velocity. So this a2 that's what we are representing in sense of hub to tip ratio at the outlet. So if we are considering this as a case we will be first calculating what will be my hub to tip ratio at the outlet. Now this is what is a fan that's what we are designing to be on say safe side or we can say we can straight way assume constant tip kind of configuration. There is nothing wrong you can move it even constant hub also even you can go with say constant mean diameter configuration also. But we can understand at the entry condition it is most preferred to go with say constant tip diameter. Here the expected pressure ratio is in the range of 2 that is also giving one of the indication for selection of constant tip diameter configuration. So if we are considering constant tip diameter configuration we will be getting our hub to tip ratio at the outlet and that's what is coming as say 0.69. Now here in this case once the hub to tip ratio at the outlet station that's what is known we can calculate what will be the hub diameter or hub radius at the exit and this is what is coming as a 0.345 meter. Now in order to do our calculation at 75% span we need to have our mid station. So if we draw our inlet area and outlet area based on the radius we will be getting our 75% span like this. So we need to calculate what will be our R1 mean and what will be our R2 mean. So that's what has been calculated based on 75% span. So my mean radius at the entry it is coming 0.418 and at the exit that's what is coming 0.461. Now we need to be very careful here since my peripheral speed it's a function of my diameter and that's the reason why my entry peripheral speed that's what need to be calculated based on entry radius and that's what is coming 306.41 meter per second same way for outlet it is coming 337.93 meter per second. Now very important configuration or very in important discussion that's what is coming here. What is our case say we want to do our design that's what will be based on say control vortex kind of configuration. Say it, it has been asked like we need to low the lower say rotor at hub region and near the tip region. In order to lower that configuration we need to change certain parameters. We can say my loading or work done capacity that's what is a function of my say world component. So if you will be able to manage my entry world component and exit world component we will be able to reduce the loading near that region. Now in order to do that configuration we need to have value of delta P0 at the mid station at the same time we need to have certain known parameter that's what is suppose say degree of reaction. Now here in this case my degree of reaction that's what is not given. So what we will be doing we will be assuming our degree of reaction at 75% span. Based on our fundamental understanding we can calculate what will be our entry world component and exit world component. And that's where we will be applying our control vortex law. So let's move how exactly we will be checking with. Now here there is nothing mentioned in sense of what need to be the number of say my world component or my loading component. That's the reason why we need to keep on eye for parameter say degree of reaction. 
we can understand if we are reducing our load near the hub region there may be possibility that my degree of reaction will be going low it may be going zero or sometimes it may go negative and we know consequences for that and as a reason why we need to keep on eye for that degree of reaction near that hub region same way we will be taking care of my blade angle variation we can say metal angles beta 1 and beta 2 variation or we can say delta beta variation that need to be smooth okay so for that let's see what can be done here so when we say we need to assume our whirl component at the entry and whirl component at the exit that's what we will be calculating based on assuming degree of reaction now throughout the span we need to vary our whirl component at the entry as well as exit so what we have learned in week 3 we have certain possibility it says we can assume arbitrary whirl velocity distribution say we will be taking say cw1 equal to ar to the power n minus b by r we can consider cw2 as say ar to the power n plus b by r it says like be at the entry you can consider this as a negative sign at the exit you can take that as a positive sign now this exponent we already have discussed when we are configuring n equal to 0 we can say it's a exponential design if you are considering n equal to 1 that's what is my constant reaction design if you are considering a equal to 0 that is nothing but it is a free vortex design if you are considering b equal to 0 and n equal to 1 that's what will be force power design or force vortex design now there are ample of possibilities here so it's a designer's choice how he or she will be deciding the distribution of whirl component at the entry and the exit what we will be doing here say in order to simplify and in order to reduce our calculation and for understanding we will be configuring our say span of the blade into three different stations we will be considering my first station that's what is from up to 40 percent of span then from 45 to 85 percent span and above 85 percent span now what it says we need to load our hub and tip in order to have proper distribution or in order to have lower loading in that particular region now in order to have that kind of configuration we will be assuming say from hub to say 40 percent of span my distribution will be cw into r square equal to constant in say mid span region or say from 40 percent to 85 percent span we will be taking cw into r to the power 0.8 equal to constant and from 85 percent to tip we will be taking cw into r square equal to constant now this is what is very important we need to realize that part so you can say this is what we are looking for in sense of our distribution okay we are expecting our total pressure rise of 2 or we are expecting our pressure ratio of the 2 so it says in this particular region we will be loading on higher side near the hub region and near the tip region we will be loading slightly lower this is what is very interesting and you know uh, this is what is now the design concept which people they are adopting these days so if you are configuring this there are other chances also the question may come in your mind sir in order to change this cw we have different possibilities with us one that's what i have discussed that maybe you can assume say some cw into to the power into r to the power n equal to constant that's what you can assume second possibility that's what is you can take fundamental design approach where you will be having your delta p0 distribution but this is what we have discussed for many approaches so at this moment we will not opting for this configuration now there is one more possibility many designers they are changing the axial velocity from say hub to certain span location and then after from say uh, that particular span to higher span 
they are configuring say higher axial velocity and towards the tip region they are configuring lower axial velocity so that is also possible but here in this case what it says my axial velocity that's what is constant so we will not be exploring that possibility what we will be exploring is having the world distribution in the range of cw into r square or r to the power 2 equal to constant from say hub to 40 percent span and from 85 percent to tip region we will be taking cw into r square equal to constant and in the mid strain region between say 40 percent span to 85 percent span we will be taking CW into R to the power 0.8 equal to constant. Now the thing is, once this is what has been decided with us, the question will come, we need to have our world velocity component at the entry and our world velocity component at the exit. Then only we will be having that law to be applicable with. So what we will be doing, suppose say if we are considering, we are having our aerodynamic work and we are having our thermodynamic work. So we can say aerodynamic work that's what is giving us the world velocity distribution say like CW1 component and CW2 component. So what we will be doing say we will be calculating our delta T0 at that mid station that's what is coming say 63.17 Kelvin. If we are comparing our aerodynamic work and thermodynamic work assuming work done factor to be 0.98 we will be getting some distribution of say my world component CW2 and CW1. So this is what I am writing as a equation 1. Okay. So in this case we are not knowing what is our CW1 and what is our CW2. Okay. Now say second configuration what we will be doing is we will be assuming our degree of reaction. So, this is what is a little tricky in that sense. If suppose say if I am assuming my degree of reaction to be lower at 75 percent span, there may be chances that near the hub region my degree of reaction will go even low, it may go to zero. So, in order to avoid such kind of situation, let us assume say degree of reaction to be 0.68. So, what we know our degree of reaction that is what we are correlating in sense of world components at the entry and exit and mean peripheral speed. So that is what will be giving us the equation in the form of CW1 and CW2. Now we are having two equations, one that is what is from our say aerodynamic and thermodynamic work comparison and second that is what is based on our degree of reaction correlation. So that is what will be giving me CW1 and CW2 distribution at the mid span. Okay, so this is what we need to learn, this is what we need to understand. Okay, now we have discussed some of the numerical in week 3 for say calculation by using different laws. So if required just go through, repeat those calculation, go through those slides again. That is what will give you brush up of your knowledge. Again you will be coming to the momentum for this numerical. Now once at the mid station we know what is our world component at the entry and exit we can make our velocity triangle and from that velocity triangle we can calculate what is our flow angle at the entry that is what is coming 2.18. My beta 1 angle that is what is coming 56.18 and my beta 2 angle that is coming 34.86. Now this beta 1 and beta 2 they are known to us we can calculate what is our delta beta and this delta beta is coming 21.31 degree. Same way we can calculate what will be our alpha 2 this alpha 2 that is what is coming 44.79 degree. Now we are interested in checking with some of the parameters so in order to hold, have those calculations we will be calculating what is our relative velocity at the entry and what will be our relative velocity at the outlet. So if we are using our triangle law and from that it says my relative velocity at the entry is coming 359.33 meter per second and relative velocity at the exit is 
say 243.74 and that's what is giving the Holler factor of 0.68. Now, next important parameter for us, it is to select or to calculate the number of blades and cord. So, what we will be doing in line to what all we have done, here also we will be assuming our aspect ratio. Let's say for this blade aspect ratio is say 1.6. If we are putting that aspect ratio as 1.6, we are able to calculate our blade cord and that's what is coming as a 0.15 meter. Now, once this is what is known, our next calculation, that's what is to calculate the number of blades. So, in earlier numericals, what all we have solved, there we have assumed our diffusion factor and based on that, we used to calculate our number of blades. Let's take a different approach in order to understand and realize this calculation in a different way. We can assume, suppose say mean say S by C ratio as say 0.88. If you are considering that as say 0.88, we can calculate our number of blade and that's what is coming 20.89. So safely, we can consider that as a 21 number of blades. Here you may have arguments saying, sir, why we are not assuming diffusion factor? Just understand one thing, we are having our keep on I parameters like say de Holler's factor, degree of reaction, diffusion factor. So one of the parameters we already have assumed that's what is our degree of reaction. So it is preferred not to go with assumption of second parameter also. That's what may give you very aggressive design. So in order to avoid that kind of situation, we are assuming our say S by C ratio or pH to chord ratio as 0.88. If we are putting that as a number, the diffusion factor is coming 0.52. Now we need to calculate our blade parameter or say blade aerofoil or aerofoil geometrical parameter. That's what will be based on Carter rule. So we will be calculating our slope factor. Here this blade also we are considering as a circular Campbell line. That's why E by C is 0.5. That's what is giving me M equal to 0.34. My camber angle, that's what is coming 30.17. Here also we are assuming our incidence angle at the mid station to be say 0. We can calculate what is our deviation angle and what will be our stagger angle. So this calculation what we are discussing, those are the cascade parameters. The methodology opted for the calculation, that's what will remain same. Okay, and mainline calculation almost if you look at say that's what is coming as a similar kind of procedure. And if you look, look at the textbooks or if you are referring the books, people they are mostly they are discussing about the mainline calculation. And then after they are putting say same way we can do our calculation for T pen hub. But we can understand in order to do systematic design, very particular design. We need to have more number of station. That's what will be giving us our blade to be in our hand as per our expected performance. Okay. Now, this is what we are doing our calculation at say 75% of span. So, these all are the parameters we are calculating. Now, very next step that's what is coming that's what is to distribute our whirl component. So, here in this case, if you look at from say 40% to 85% of span, we are considering our CW into R to the power 0.8. That's what is coming say constant. It is say C2 we are putting. Okay. Same way, any radius in between these two, that's what we can calculate. Because we have done our calculation at the mid station, 75% span. So we will be taking that as a constant and that constant we will be applying between 40% span to 85% span. So this is what we can calculate in sense of CW1, that's what is coming 9.78 meter per second. Same way my CW2, that's what is coming 220.70 meter per second at 40% span. Now say below 40% 40, 40 span, we are looking for CW into R square equal to constant. So, our requirement it is to calculate the CW or 
we can say that's what I say C3. The constant need to be calculated. So here we must realize at particular span, suppose say 40 percent span, we have opted for CW into R to the power 0.8 equal to constant. So at one station we cannot have say two different ball velocity components. So what we will be doing say at 40 percent span we will be applying the same law okay because this is what is our known to us at 40 percent span. So that's what will be helping us in order to calculate C3. Same way we can opt for say C1 also near the tip region. Now when we are configuring our design say that's what we have discussed here. So there may be chances near this 40 percent span as well as near the 75 percent span we may be getting our distribution of world component in a zigzag way. So we need to have smoothening of the curve in that particular region and that's what is being done. So here if you look at this is what is representing the distribution of say CW1 at entry from say 0 to 40 percent span from 40 percent to 85 percent span and from 85 percent span to T region. So this is what is representing the distribution of CW1. In line to that this is what is representing the distribution of CW2 and based on that if we will be putting our I and if we calculate our delta P0 this is what is representing the loading. Now here in this case by changing the value of CW1 or CW2 even we are able to modify the tip loading. But at this moment this is what is serving our purpose in sense of expected pressure ratio to be 2. So this is what is been calculated and this is what is been assumed with. So you can say this is what is representing CW1, this is what is representing CW2. So we can understand we are having our Excel sheet program. For that Excel sheet program we will be doing our calculation from 40 percent span to 85 percent span and then after later on that same sheet we will be using for different world distribution. And at the junction point it may require we need to modify our distribution. Okay. Now let us look at this. This is what is representing the Excel sheet with having say smoothing of the curve. So if we look at this is what is representing very first calculation that is what we have done at 75 percent span. Same way this is what is representing the calculation at 85 percent span and this is what is representing our calculation at 40 percent of span. Okay. Now we are putting our eye in order to understand say what is the variation of delta P0 because that is also very important for us. Same way we will be putting our eye for say degree of reaction. So if you look at my degree of reaction at the hub that is what is coming 0 0.48 and near the tip that is what is coming 0.74. Now diffusion factor that is what is varying all the way from 0.19 to 0.56 and we are having our variation of camber angle and stagger angle accordingly. So we need to check with what is happening with all these parameters in line to what all we have discussed up till now. So this sheet what we are observing that is what has come after many iterations. Okay. So likewise when you are doing your design you need to be very careful it is not that you are sitting for an hour and you will get the design. That is what is required lot of parameters to be observed and those observed parameters again and we again we are putting with the highlighting point that is what is say delta P0, delta beta, degree of reaction, diffusion factor, de Hollers factor, camber angle all those parameters you need to keep on eye. Now based on what all calculation we have done this is what is a blade that is what is coming. So here if you look at this is what is representing my curve at the hub and this is what is at the tip region. And in this case if you look at this is what is my hub region and this is what is the tip region. And in three dimensional way if we look at this is what will be the shape of our blade. So now if you look at this blade 
you must realize what all blades we are looking for high bypass ratio fan or say low bypass ratio fan that's what is having three dimensional funny shape and just realize that shape it has come by design just understand that thing it is not because it looks nice but this is what has come by design here in this case we are not discussing anything about the variation of cord we are assuming our cord length to be same throughout the span it may be possible designer may modify the cord length near the hub region maybe at the mid station and even at the tip station as per the requirement so now once you are making this blade ready with use your computational tool in order to simulate this blade once you are simulating your blade just observe certain parameters what we are looking at in sense of say increasing the losses or decreasing the losses or how my flow that's what is behaving on suction surface how my flow that's what is behaving on pressure surface based on that certain modifications you need to do and after doing those iteration you will come up with the final design that's what it says this is what is working fine under design condition it may be possible when you are doing your design that's what is giving best performance expected pressure rise even efficiency at a design point but when you are putting that under off design condition suppose say 80% mass flow rate or 75% mass flow rate you will find that's what is not giving wider operating range in sense of my stall margin under that condition you may need to modify your blades you may need to modify your aero foils if possible you may need to modify your dimensions of the blade so this is what is all we are discussing in sense of transonic compressor so in overall this week if we configure week 10 that week 10 we have dedicated for design of transonic compressor and in that we have discussed detailed design of transonic compressor that's what will build the confidence in you for designing the future axial flow compressor or future axial flow fan which are of transonic nature so here we are stopping with i'm sure you will get the confidence it is preferred that you just make your own design sheet do this calculation what all design we have done you can go with some other configuration also say configuration like maybe you can go with the free vortex you can go with say different loading and as we have discussed you can go with change of axial velocity and that's what will be giving you the feeling of real design thank you thank you very much